Good morning, church. It is wonderful to know that you are watching our worship service today. It is sad that we are not together, but to know that you took time to log in today and to turn your computers or your iPads or iPhones or any phones to see our worship service and be a part of that makes me feel that our ministry continues, makes me feel that everything we do now, regardless how much effort it takes, regardless how many hours we spend, pastors putting all these videos and uh, live worship service together, uh, trying to record musicians, trying to put um, a script together, trying to reconstruct that worship service that was so important for each of us. The question is, why do we do it from here? Many people probably think, oh, that would be enough if a pastor does it from home. I don't. I disagree. Because especially for our church, for Francis Street First United Methodist Church, that is here in ministry in St. Joseph, on the corner of, as I always say on Sunday, on the corner of 12th and Francis. It is important for us to know that we continue having life and energy and the presence of the Holy Spirit in our sanctuary, in our midst. And you will say, well, but it is just a video. This is so far away from my home. You know, in Christ, we are embodying the faith. We are embodying Christ in our lives. And when we are worshiping in here and we recording the service from this sanctuary, when I am surrounded with these beautiful stained glass windows, when I know that each pew has a memory of you, when I remember your faces, when I also acknowledge the fact, because each of us as a Christian, believes that there is a cloud of witnesses that is always around us, protecting us, praying for us, rising us up from wherever we are today. That's why we worship from this sanctuary every Sunday. And I invite you to join us on Sundays at 10 a.m. to be together, to pray together, to be honest in the presence of the one who gave his life for you and for me. 
Let's start worshiping God. Easter is true, if indeed the crucified Jesus has been miraculously raised from the dead and vindicated as the Messiah, then how should we live? If the once dead Jesus had been raised into eternal life, that Jesus' way has been vindicated and affirmed by God as God's way, then we must adjust our lives accordingly. Easter is a revelation of who God really is and what God really wants out of us and the world. If Easter is true, then God is the one who raised, crucified Jesus from the dead. Oh, 
glory and the earnest show that the echoes thoroughly the promise known that the blood of Christ redemption thrive. Hallelujah! With everything in gold and silver found, the flagment piercing of such designs, the witness lasting his internal blood. Hallelujah! With purity of soul discovers truth, obedience approves sincere love bloom, the earnest of hearts. Oblations charm. Alleluia. For the Son of Man will come in the glory of his Father with his angels. He will render to everyone according to his deeds. We are saved by grace through faith, but our faith must manifest itself in good work. Our salvation depends on it. In 1 Peter 1.17, we hear about our privilege to be good citizens of this world and also the sojourners of the world to come. An old gospel song illustrates the meaning of our identity in Christ as sojourners. I love the Lord because he has heard my voice and my supplications. Because he inclined his ear to me, therefore I will call unto him as long as I live. What shall I return to the Lord for all his bounty to me? I will lift up the cup of salvation and call on the name of the Lord. I will pay my vows to the Lord in his presence, all of his people. Precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his faithful ones. Lord, I am your servant. I am your servant the child of your serving girl. You have loosed my bonds. I will offer your thanksgiving sacrifice and call on the name of the Lord. I will pay my vows to the Lord in the presence of all his people. In the courts of the house of the Lord, in your midst, O Jerusalem, praise the Lord. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him, all creatures here below. Praise Him above ye heavenly host. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Let's prepare ourselves for hearing the word of God from the Gospel of Luke 24, verses 36 through 49. Things. Jesus himself stood among them and said, Peace be with you. They are terrified and afraid. They thought they were seeing a ghost. He said to them, Why are you startled? Why are there doubts arising in your hearts? Look at me. I'm a, look at my hands and feet. It's really me. Touch me and see, for a ghost does not have flesh and bones as you see that I have. As he said this, he showed them his hands and feet. Because of these are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you. Be everything written about me in the law from Moses, the prophets, prophets, and the Psalms must be fulfilled. They opened their minds to understand the scriptures. He said to them, this is, is, this is what is written. The Christ will suffer and rise from the dead on the third day. And then a change of heart and a life, forgiveness of sins, as he preached in his name to all nations, beginning from Jerusalem, <clears throat> beginning from Jerusalem. You are a witness of these things. Look, I am sending you what my father promised. You are to stay in the city until you are furnished with heavenly power. The, the word of God is for the people of God. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Many years ago, as many stories start, once upon a time, and in each of our lives we have stories like that, once upon a time. We love to tell stories like this to our children because this is how we grew up. We listen to the stories of our parents and grandparents that started just like that, once upon a time.
Once upon a time, my husband and I, and two of our children at that time, uh, my son was just five years old, uh, we really wanted to take them to the Black Sea. We really wanted them to experience the freshness and the majesty of the water that is so big and so endless. And uh, also, it is very common for Russians to take their children on summer uh, to the to the Black Sea because we do not have enough vitamins in the area where I grew up. We did not have enough sun. Uh, we did not have enough vitamin D. And uh, every summer we try to take our children, just like my parents took us every summer somewhere south, that we get tanned and we have enough reserve of vitamin D for the winter time because winter lasts about seven months or even more in uh, the Urals. So we had been hoping for to go to the Black Sea for months. We put some money aside and one day we purchased tickets and everybody was excited. What happened right before the trip, my husband decided to cook chicken. And he didn't think about washing the chicken really well, forgetting about salmonella and cooking that chicken and also washing the chicken over the sink with glasses um, that were in the sink somehow enabled salmonella to get into my son's body. So he got sick. He got really sick. And uh, the first symptoms, of course, were not really um, alarming. But the closer we got to that trip, the sicker my son was becoming. But since we had been hoping for that trip for so long, we decided that the son of the south, the, the water, salty water of the Black Sea will continue the healing. So we decided to go. We took the risk to get on a journey. So we arrived to the Black Sea and then my son, instead of running around and enjoying the sun, he, for some reasons, was very calm. And he said, I don't want to go where people are. I want to sit down. I want to sit on a bench. And it was so unusual to hear it from my five years old who was surrounded by palm trees and all kinds of beautiful flowers and children playing uh, in the park. And here it was the playground, but my son did not want to go. He says, I don't want to be around people. I want to be alone. And that night, his condition turned to the worst. He developed pneumonia and uh, started having difficulty breathing. And then when we finally called the ambulance, and imagine we were in a hotel, so we were not having anything, um, all those things that you might find at home. Uh, medicine for fever, uh, also a thermometer to take his temperature, so when the ambulance arrived and the doctor started checking his vitals, my son collapsed. I knew that he was struggling. I knew that he was not breathing. And then when they took an X-ray and they got out um, of the ICU to talk to the family, the doctor said his both lungs are completely black. He has pneumonia that took over both of both lungs and uh, it's critical. His condition is critical. I thought I would lose my mind. I wanted to be with my boy. And my uh, 14 years old daughter was just next to me crying. My husband was absolutely devastated to get the news like this when you had been hoping for a wonderful vacation. And now right next to that, you have to wrestle with the question, will our boy even survive? That was something that is so unfamiliar to handle, to process, and uh, just like jumping down from, um, from a huge cliff where on the top of it you experience joy and on the bottom it's complete darkness and hopelessness. And um, the matter is only will he be living? Will he 
survive a little boy. And uh, when the doctor says, oh, you just go home, I said, no, I'm not going home. I will stay here. Our hospital does not allow people to stay with the patients. Uh, this is ICU. And I said, no, I'm not going home. Could you allow me to do something in the hospital just to be with my boy? Could, I can wash um, dishes. I could mop the floor. I could be a janitor, anything, just to let me be there, be with my son. And the doctor finally took mercy. I probably looked like a crazy woman. And he let me get into my son's room. My son hardly breathed. His eyes were closed. He was very pale. And then for five days, it was a matter of death or life. And I remember that I just sat on the floor because it was not a chair in the room. I was not allowed to be there. I sat on the floor and held his hand and I just prayed and I prayed and I prayed and I cried and I asked God to, to help him recover. And then one day he opened his eyes and then another day he wanted to sit up. In the distance I can see Storms begin to grow Darkness out ahead Clouds are moving in Tempting winds They blow Answers here, answers there Answers everywhere Which way do I go? Then a whisper softly comes I will let you know And our hearts burn within us Like so many years ago On the way to Emmaus His words of love and hope And our hearts burn within us As we walk down this road Take the hand of the Prince of Peace To our Father's home In the still of the soul The quiet of my heart I bow my head in humility, yearning deep, reaching far, and pleading with faith for direction. I want to do His will, then a whisper softly comes, I am with you still. All things are possible in the one who heals and loves and restores life to eternity. When my little son started regaining his strength, and I suddenly recognized that every night, all I was reading to him was the Bible, this just adult version of the Bible, and I was so happy that he's coming back to life and he is communicating to me and he responds to my questions and here I'm relaxed and here I'm already not as grieving. I'm trying to make sense out of what just happened, but I do not talk about it with my little boy because I think he's too young to hear about God. And so at this point, I ask him, what do you want me to read? 
What once upon a time story do you want to hear today? And he says, Mama, I want to hear what you've been reading all these nights. I want to hear the Bible, he said. And as strange as it was, I followed. I grabbed my Bible and I started reading to him from the beginning to the end every day. And somehow I realized that the Word of God has the energy that is healing, that has a promise. And so now, when we are grieving over what had been hoped for, it's a good time just to be honest and admit that the same life might not be the same as we know when we come back. But as long as we have the Word of God, as long as we have this confidence in life eternal, life will continue and healing is possible. And the promise that God gave us all will never be taken away. I want to do His will Then a whisper softly comes I am with you still And our hearts burn within us like so many years ago On the way to Emmaus is words of love and hope And our hearts burn within us As we walk down this road in the hand of the Prince of Peace To our Father's home Take the hand of the Prince of Peace To our Father's home So the question for today is If Easter is true What a heavy question and especially, it is hard to answer this question now. And again, I invite you to return to the scripture. On the same hour in verse 33, that same hour they got up and returned to Jerusalem after Jesus revealed himself to disciples and they recognized him and they remembered the promise he made to them. That same hour they got up and returned to Jerusalem, and they found the eleven and their companions gathered together. They were saying, The Lord has risen indeed, and he has appeared to Simon. And then they told what happened on the road. And you know, when we go to the parks and we walk, and we have so much time now to think and to analyze and to wrestle with those things that we had been hoping for for years and uh, hoping that they will take place this summer or this fall. And then what if we meet the one on the road? What if that stranger who passes us or maybe uh, gets even uh, next to us and starts working with us Maybe his face is covered with a mask. And then ask the simple questions, what are you grieving about? What hopes are you grieving about today? And that will leave us puzzled. Who is that stranger? Why did he get next to me when I try to be alone, away from people, and um, no less than disciples of Christ, I see all these people who pass our house every morning and during the day and in the evening, trying to catch up with fitness, trying to get some fresh air and sunshine and uh, get their bodies thinned, no less than then we try to do in Russia every summer. That's a way to cope.
That's the way to cope with uncertainties, with grieving, and kind of beat that anxiety in us that builds up when we stay home. The Lord has risen indeed. He has appeared to Simon. And when we don't know if Easter is true, it is important to admit the fact that this question probably will be always in our minds, but our hearts say it different. And when Jesus would be talking to us, we will trust that he will say the same very words that he told his disciples, peace be with you. We will be startled, no less, and maybe even terrified. And we will thought that we are seeing a ghost. But if Jesus shows up in your house and tell the same words and greet you with the words of peace, don't be frightened. He is risen. He is risen indeed. And his hands and his feet are showing the wounds and our lives and our hearts experience the true joy that we had been hoping for for a long time. And now we continue hoping that one day we will be resurrected from this anxiety and grieving staying home because there is a promise in this Easter. And if you still wrestle with the question if Easter is even true, it's okay. You can continue wrestling, but the joy in your heart will be unmistaken. Amen. I want to do His will Then a whisper softly comes I am with you still And our hearts burn within us Like so many years ago His words of love and hope And our hearts burn within us As we walk down this road In the hand of the Prince of Peace To our Father's home Take the hand of the Prince of Peace to our Father's home. So let's get into the mindset of a small child. Let's see life in the pretty ways. Let's not focus on the negative stuff. Jeremiah 29, 11 says, For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans for welfare and not for evil. I give you a future and a hope. Let's focus on that. Take care and God bless. My son Aaron is four. The other day he picked me a flower and to him he saw a beautiful flower. A long stem, bushy, whitish color flowers. They're kind of tiny. And some green leafy like things at the bottom. And I watched him. He pulled and he tugged. It was in the ground pretty good. And he handed it to me and he was so proud. And he said, here, Mommy, I picked you flowers. So, of course, they went into the house and in a cup of water. And they sat on the table. And what it actually was is a weed, of course. But that's not what Aaron's seen. He's seen the prettiness of it. He's seen the pretty white flowers. But, you know, life is like that. And we usually see the negative, you know, the weed. But we need to look at the world from a 40-year-old's point. See the pretty stuff. Focus on the pretty stuff. And during these times, I know it's not easy to do. We're stuck at home. We can't go and do the normal activities that we do. Shopping and hanging out, sitting at a restaurant, um, going to the park. You know, just the normal everyday things that I guess um, sometimes we take those for granted. 
but during these times that we're at home and we're pretty much isolated, let's take this time, let's reflect on God and where we are in our lives and where He fits into our lives. And this is when Jesus spoke. He said, Oh, how foolish you are and how slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have declared. Because it's true when we are hoping for something, we not necessarily understand the fullness of the message of the promise. We humans are known for converting the message in a certain way that fits our hopes. And when our hopes are not fulfilled, we do not admit that we actually altered the hopes. We altered the hopes that we have in God to our own hopes. And when we lose them, we become upset and angry and uh, absolutely disillusioned because we take it as God did not fulfill his promise. We forget that maybe in the root of the promise, it was a different message. And this is what Jesus said, because he had never promised them to liberate the nation from the Romans. He never promised them to enter Jerusalem on the horse as a general or the triumphal king who enters into his new kingdom. He never promised that. And they, again, are not blamed for that because the disciples were sincerely wrestling with the making any sense out of what just happened, just like you and I wrestle with the scripture and just like you and I wrestle with what is happening to us today. We don't know, but we had been hoping that this summer will be so different. We never imagined that by this time we will lose 49,000 Americans to this coronavirus. We had been hoping for one thing and now we are given a different reality and you and I are trying to discuss it today and make some sense out of it. Was it not necessary that the Messiah should suffer, Jesus continues these things, and then enter into his glory? And then they entered a village, the village to which they were going, and Jesus went with them. So the disciples started sensing something about him, not yet opening their eyes to, to the reality and to the knowledge that it is Jesus. This is the one who used to teach them. This is the one who ate with them. This is the one who broke the bread and fed them with fish and uh, also fed the crowd that was over 5,000 performing all these miracles, healing the sick, resurrecting Lazarus to life. Yes, that was the same Jesus, but they did not see it yet because of the grieving that clouded their eyes, clouded their ears, but they started sensing something about this stranger. Stay with us because it is almost evening and the day is now nearly over. They show a wonderful hospitality to a stranger. That very hospitality that Jesus taught all of us to show. When he was at the table with them, he took bread, blessed and broke it and gave it to them. Then their eyes were opened and they recognized him and he vanished from their sight. Jesus is in that bread and wine that we partake at the Lord's table. And next Sunday, we will have communion. And you probably wonder, how can we have communion when we are so separated from each other? We will do it at home. We will deliver to your porches and your doors a communion set that is sterile and it has a wafer and it has a small container with juice. 
I will bless it here in the sanctuary before we deliver it to your doors. And then on Sunday, when you participate in our worship service, I will have a moment when I will ask you to open, break the seal of that small container and um, follow the liturgy and great thanksgiving to the one who gives us life, who gives us promise. And when we struggle and wrestle over what we had been hoping for, feeling like it was taken away from us, we also will recognize the fact that in that Lord's table, in that communion, in that Eucharist, we will be participating in the truth eternal, in the life that is given to us. And every time when we come to the Lord's table, we give ourselves to God. I want to read to you the prayer that is written and published in the book of Will Williams, whom I really like and respect. And for this time of the year, he has this prayer. Lord Jesus, I give you my hands to do your work. I give you my feet to go your way. I give you my eyes to see as you do. I give you my tongue to speak your words. I give you my mind that you may think in me. I give you my spirit that you may pray in me. Above all, I give you my heart that you may love in me. I give you my whole self, that you may grow in me. So it is you, Lord Jesus, who live and work and pray in me. In Jesus' name, amen. And now when we are ready to go back to whatever we started doing this morning, after the service, I hope we will have the sense that we've been in the presence of God for this time, that we received the wisdom and the word that we had been hoping for to hear. Yes, it might be not exactly what we had been hoping for all these days, because I can give you the answer. I can give you any solution, and I can give you even hope myself. All I can offer today is the hope from God that things will get better, then the promise of God will never end, and it is as real as God's resurrection. And may the love of God and the presence of his Son, Jesus Christ, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with each of you, wherever you are, at home or on the street, wherever you listen to this benediction, to this blessing, may the love of God and the presence of His Son, and the communion and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you every moment of your life, until I serve we meet again online on Sunday at 10 a.m. Up.